In this lesson, you're going to learn about the substring method that takes a portion of a string and makes another string object out of it. You'll also learn about the length method, which is useful in conjunction with the substring method. Let's start by creating a string. String, we'll call the variable Java, and we'll set it equal to I love Java. When you are accessing a portion of the string using the substring method, it starts counting at zero. So to make it easier, let's number all the characters. There's two versions of the substring method. One, you give it a, an argument that tells you where to start, and it goes all the way to the end. The other one, you give it two arguments, one that tells you where to start, and the other that tells you where to end. Let's start by just taking the word Java. So we're going to say string, and we'll call it a equals. The string we're starting from is the one that the Java variable is pointing at. So we're going to say java.substring, then parentheses. This version of the substring method that we're going to use has one parameter, so it means we've got to give it one argument here. We want to start at 7 and go all the way to the end. So we'll say 7, and it'll go all the way to the end. So it'll give us index 7, 8, 9, and then 10. A, and we'll run it. And there we go, we got Java. Now, let's say we wanted to take love. So we'd have to say where we're going to start and where we're going to end. String b equals java dot substring and we'll start at index 2 so our first argument is 2 then we got to tell it where to end now we want it to end at 5 but what's really tricky about the substring method is the first one is inclusive but the second one is exclusive that means we're gonna have to put 2 comma 6 it's gonna start at index 2 but it's gonna end one before index 6 which is index 5 and this is a common mistake people make not realizing the two parameter version is inclusive for the first one and exclusive for the second one. So let's print out B. And we'll see that we've got love. Now I'm going to show you another way that we could have taken the word Java using the two parameter version of the substring method. So we'll tell it the start, which will still be 7, but then we'll tell it the end, which will be 11. And if we don't want to count to the end, we can use the length method. But there's something tricky you need to know about the length method. So let's first print off system out print line, and then we'll say java.length. Notice that unlike with an array, the dot .length has an open close parentheses after it because it's a method. So let's run this and see what we get for java.length. We see it's 11. When we're counting the length using the length method, we start counting at 1. But when we're counting for the substring method, we start counting at 0. The length is always going to be one more than the last index of a string. Let's make another string that's also going to take Java, but by using the two-parameter version of substring and the length method. So we'll say string c equals, we'll say java.substring. We still want to start at 7 but we're going to end at java.length. Java.length is going to give us 11, which is out of bounds. However, remember the second argument is exclusive. So it's only going to go through 10, even though java.length returns 11. System out print line C, we're going to still get Java. Now I'm going to show you two things you need to be careful of using the substring method. First, let's say string d equals java.substring. Let's start at 7 and then go to 12. 12 is exclusive, so it means it's only going to go to 11. But you see there's no 11 here. So if we try to run this, it's going to give us an error. It's going to crash. and It's going to give us an index out of bounds error because we're out of bounds. This is most likely to happen if you're doing substring as part of an algorithm using a loop where you're going through and looking at parts of the string and you go over too far on one end or the other. Another common mistake people make is they do something like this. String e equals java dot substring and maybe they want to take the L in love. So they say 2 comma 2. It's starting at 2, but it's ending before it starts. It actually gives us an empty string here. This won't create an error, but it'll give us an empty string because it ends before it starts. There's nothing there at all. If you want to see that it's an empty string, we can do system out print line, and we can do e.length. 
and it's going to tell us the size of E is zero because there's nothing there. If you want to learn more about the string class and its methods, click on the picture for the next video on the string class. Otherwise, check out the Java playlist for all sorts of Java tutorials.